Hey PC gamers and welcome back to the PC Gamer Chat Log. I am Lauren Morton. And hey everyone, I'm Molly Taylor. This week, Molly and I are bringing on our senior editor, Robin Valentine, and our news writer, Lincoln Carpenter, to talk about this year's PC Gamer Top 100 PC Games list, our yearly big battle, big list of the current Top 100 games that you can play on PC. Uh, We are bringing them both in to talk about the process, how the list happened, our personal grievances and feelings about the list, because (laughs) it represents a big team of people and a lot of... uh, discussion and voting so uh we're gonna hash it out here a little bit air air some of our our wins and our less wins i guess anyway before <laughs> we do that, molly what did you play last week yeah so i just came back from a week off work uh which was meant to be you know my like well it wasn't supposed to be it was my birthday week but it was kind of gonna be like a do stuff week it did mm-hmm. not it did not end up being a do stuff week. It ended up being a play metaphor re Fantasio for 70 hours. Who uh, could have week. guessed that that was going to happen? Oh no. Who'd have thunk it? It's not like I've been talking about it for the last three weeks. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I have been playing so much metaphor. Uh, as of right now, I am very, very close to the end um i am like two in game days before what i believe is the final battle although Mm -hmm. it it is traditionally very classic atlas to be like 10 more hours yeah you killed the final the final boss now go kill god uh so will that happen again let's see (laughs) a very jrpg thing to do uh but right now i believe i'm almost at the end i've had a fantastic time it is reignited my love for jrpgs it is just so incredible the archetype system fucking rules it's so good it's so like it's just the the way that it works the like the way you can level up and they like spec abilities into like a different class like all the cross class skills oh it reminds me a lot of like older jrpgs but like very refined like old like JLPG job systems. It mm-hmm. reminds me a lot of like Final Fantasy X's job system a little bit. The vibes give me like Final Fantasy XII vibes and I love Final Fantasy XII. Yeah, just cannot, cannot say enough good things about the game. I spent most of the week, I'm doing a thing right now where I'm like streaming from my PC to my Steam Deck so that I can oh, yeah. sit on my couch because I hate, kind of hate sitting at my desk to, to play games at the minute. So I've been like streaming it to my Steam Deck, playing it on my TV. And the entire week was just spent with me on the Steam Deck and my partner playing my Switch and also watching me play Metaphor (laughs) and become very invested in the story. Uh, So that was like really, really fun. We were like experiencing the story together. Um, I made a very goofy joke about a plot point and it ended up being true, which was very funny. (laughs) Yeah, just it's... It's fantastic. Genuinely just a brilliant game. And I already can't wait to do my new game plus run. Nice. I, uh, I played a lot more infinity Nikki since the last time we talked, uh, (laughs) because as I mentioned, I was in the, uh, we, we were in the like closed, closed beta and then they reset and they take those accounts away. And then there's also the like regular, the the public closed beta, which I also yeah. got into like as a, just a person <laughs> instead of uh for work. Uh, so I also have been playing that. I didn't go back and do like too much more on that account because I didn't want to just like go back through the same story again, because those accounts also aren't going to roll over to the full version. So I was like, don't spend too much time there. But before that happened, I was doing a lot more uh, dress up and the battles. Um, I love the like Pokemon trainer ass uh, dialogue that the dress up battles have where they're just like, just saying the most ridiculous things to you. Like one of, <laughs> I think the first one, they're like, snip, snip, prepare to cry. It's like, oh no. It is so Pokemon, it's, Pokemon it's trainer so corny. ass. I love it. Um, I, I don't know how I feel about the actual like dress up battle part right now. It's a lot of like tooling through tooltips. I, I love it. 
I love it because I the the thing that I like is something that I've always really liked about the series is that it's a game about dress up and then when it comes to actually having to do the dress up battles it is literally just a matter of throwing everything everything on that scores you the highest points and you look busted you You look look so busted and it's that it's like my favorite thing. It's always been one of my favorite things about the series is just putting Throw together, together all your highest cool points pieces, and you look dumb. You look so you look dumb. ugly as hell, and but it's like, won. oh my god, you're so stylish. <laughs> yeah, which is it's silly. Um, I just I'm fine with that. I'm just like, oh, but like the the like trying to hit the category and all it's really just me like mousing over a lot of tooltips for a lot of different yeah. items being like okay this one this one is a b tier for cool but this one is an s tier for cool um yeah. and like early on your ability outfits that they have you get through the main story that are like required those have like i think s tier pieces in each of the categories so like those are what you're using to win battles a lot early on or those like pre-made um ability outfits like your fishing outfit is cool and um you're um the attack spell one is like elegant yes um but it's fun it's still it's very pretty and i love i finally got to the other town on the other side of the map stone i keep wanting to call it stonehenge his name isn't stonehenge obviously it's <laughs> stoneville or something like that it's stone something and it has these giant we'll go stone, stoneville. Like, mushrooms and there's like lavender in the fields i think and it's it's yeah. uh it's pretty. And I love the music there. It's very pretty. I like that town. So I'm excited to go back and actually start replaying when launch happens, whenever that is. We don't know yet, but that's mostly what I did. And then uh, I played a little more Shadows of Doubt. I've been like off and on with the, uh, you know, the procedural sandbox mystery game. I'm still enjoying that. And I still really like that I can just like pick it up and be like, I'm going to do another little side job in my Shadows of Doubt save. And so I was streaming to my friend uh, the other night. And uh, she was just watching me solve a, what kind of case did I do? Oh, I had to like uh, find someone with a briefcase, tail them, take a photograph of them exchanging the briefcase to another person, figure out who that second person was, and then steal the briefcase from them. And so I, I tailed this guy to his apartment, had to find a way to sneak in. I couldn't like, there was no good air vent. It was really hard to get an air vent into his apartment, like crawling through the the vents. So I just had to like sneak in after he was already asleep to his place, lock pick my way in. And I was like, where's this guy hidden this stupid briefcase? I was like, is it literally on his body? I'm like there while he's sleeping, trying to figure it out. And uh, it was hidden in a trash can in the kitchen. I finally found it. I was like, this sneaky guy hid his briefcase (laughs) in the trash can. So that was my shadows of doubt time. So, well- with all that done then, let's go grab Lincoln and Robin to talk about the top 100. Okay, welcome Lincoln and Robin. This year, once again, we have brought on someone who is new to the top 100 process and someone who has done a few of these before. Would you both tell us how many top 100s you've done? Robin, do you know how many top 100s you've done? Yeah, you should have checked this with me before we started recording. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, I'm just putting you on the spot. How many would I have done um, on PC Gamer... I must have done like four or thereabouts, maybe. Okay. Maybe five. Probably, I think four. And then surely in the past, you've done I've, more than four. Well, I've done a lot of top one hundreds on other publications, but um, okay. Such well, as this is my the specific fourth. PC gamer blend. Yeah, this, this is, is your this fourth. is my this is my fourth, Robin. Yeah, I know. Crazy. Maybe I've done five. I haven't been on PC gamer that long, even though I seem like um uh. Uh, an old wizard or old something. Haggard. Uh, no. but, uh, <laughs> That's literally why we brought you here, Robin. I thought you were done like 15 plus. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe it's five then, because I was probably okay. on one before. I've always, I mean, I'm always on one, but um, I was pro- I probably did one before <laughs> Molly joined. Lincoln Pop Quiz, how many top 100s with PC Gamer have you done? If my math is right, I think it adds up to one, but honestly, a little bit less because I started this one as a freelancer and got hired full oh, is time, it in the like middle? partway through it. So, n- like, not even one. <laughs> like point eight. Yeah, of like a top three, three quarters of a top one hundred. <laughs> well, uh, as you said, your your opinions made it in here. So we talked about this a little bit last year. We'll recap the process again for people because obviously the top one hundred PC games 
right now is something that we've been doing for years upon years upon years. We republish a list every single year that is a newly debated, newly litigated list of the top 100 PC games. And historically, there has been a lot of debating and a lot of litigating. The process used to involve uh, a big meeting where everybody just sort of like shouted over each other about like different things and where they should be on the list. Um, And that's really fun. Uh, (laughs) Unironically, that is fun. I never got to witness one of those. Um, And the team has grown, though. Like, that was feasible when it was, like, 15 to 20 people all shouting in, like, a Google meeting at each other about a list of 100 games. We're more people than that now, so there's Mm -hmm. math. Last year was the first year of of the reign of math. And now we, we have continued in this math era where we, we, the first thing we do is we vote on the top 100. We vote on like over 200 games. Uh, and we vote not just on like, I think it was more this it, year. Was it I like think there was, nearly, there was, was close to like something? I think it was close to 300 games this year that we, that we voted on. It's Which a is lot of games. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Because actually, I should say we start with nominating. First, we look at last year's list. Then we all go back and we're like, okay, what do we want to vote on this year? And sometimes it's people forcing things we've already voted on back into the voting pool. It's like, nope, we're voting on it again. Like, this is my bugabear. Um, and then we, we vote on like several different categories uh, hotness, playability, quality. What are the other ones? importance and importance very very high level very very abstract in some ways but uh they they all get plugged into a big spreadsheet um and and like they're weighted differently the like importance versus hotness versus playability there's all different weights i'm i'm not the math wizard behind it i don't know this particulars exactly uh but but it's been thought over very heavily by uh the wizards in the towers of PC Gamer. So <laughs> we all give our opinions on all of those things for all of these many, many, many games. And then after the spreadsheet spits out the math and gives us a list, then we argue about if we should move things around some. If there are so, any strange outliers. Yeah, if the math was wrong, actually. So <laughs> given, okay, given that overview of the process, how did you feel about the process this year? Lincoln, as somebody new, how do you feel about the process? You have nothing to compare it to. Yeah, so it's interesting being a, a child purely of the age of numbers. Um, <laughs> I, I do feel a little bit like I've missed out on the um, just the getting everyone in a cave so that they can shout each other about video games. Um, uh, although part of me feels like I would have been destroyed by that process a little bit. Um <laughs> I, I imagine it kind of being sort of like a Thanksgiving dinner kind of energy where just all the, the angry uncles are just popping off with their wildest opinions. Um, mm-hmm. so and you always know that. which uncles are getting the last word in. We know which yes. ones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Every um, year. <laughs> so I'm sad to have missed that. Um, but it, having the um, the spreadsheet presented in front of you and having to make just the uh, like quantitative decisions about um, – how you rank a game's just like importance and uh, quality. Um, those are different, difficult calls to make, but mm-hmm. you do some interesting thinking of just like, what do I really feel about Stardew Valley as a person? <laughs> um, <laughs> like, yes, Stardew Valley, we can all agree, very important. Do I personally love Stardew Valley that much? Me? I'm like, I like Stardew Valley Vine. I don't love it. Um, and it just having to do those internal deliberations about where those lines fall is an interesting process for something like 300 games or whatever. Um, yeah, because yeah, so that's the games. important part is you are voting on, we're all voting on like our individual feelings about these things. That's important because like that's the human factor that goes in before the math. It's not you trying to guess what like everyone else thinks about the thing because then why would we be voting and aggregating the votes it's uh it's Mm -hmm. very much like supposed to be your personal thoughts robin how do you feel about the the transition from from shouting match to to math uh i mean i'm always very instinctively uh, against these things turning into math and data and science um (laughs) but um so i think my initial reaction was like oh no that's taking all the fun out of it but actually i think it worked pretty well and having been in multiple of those meetings um they i think they're very exhausting oh they're two hour plus meetings oh i mean some of them have gone on a lot longer than two hours and i do think 
I think the thing that's really good this year is, um, I mean, you talk about uncle, uncles arguing at the end of like Thanksgiving. I think part of the problem with the system we had before was that it it was as much a test of like endurance and volume as it was any, anything else, which does whittle you down to basically the members of the team who look most like uncles at Thanksgiving. Like, uh, <laughs> I think you start to get a, a, a representation of a of a, a quite a small group on the team. Um, who are willing to stay in a meeting until their opinion is fully heard. Um, I, I, <laughs> to be clear, I'm definitely one of those people myself. Um, there were some loud mouths <laughs> on the team. Uh, I was definitely not one of them when it came to the shouting matches. I was very good and quiet, but yeah, for sure, I agree with that. So it's nice to see, I think, um, I think it's nice to see through the maths the kind of representation of, of the opinions of people on the team who, who are maybe less adept at, or less willing to stay in, in those meetings and kind of uh, state their piece. Um, and uh, and then we kind of had the process afterwards that let people kind of advocate for things in their own time, um, which, which I think was really valuable as well. Um, it also avoided the problem, which has always been my kind of uh, my kind of biggest bugbear with the top 100 is that, like, because the meeting is so long, the stuff you get to in the second half of the meeting, you're so much less sharp for than the stuff in the first <laughs> half. So you tend to end up with a top 100 where, like, the top 50 is pretty on point, and then the bottom 50, you know, the games are probably all right, but are they in exactly the right order? I don't know. We, we were got pretty tired. Ti- we were pretty tired at that point. <laughs> At a certain point, people just start to give up on arguments because they're too, you know, they're flagging. And like some of that stuff, I think, um, I think we've always had a top 100 that represents the team to a, to a degree. But I think it, there's always room to like refine that and um, and to make it feel like we have justifications for every game on the list. We have a justification for why it is where it is. It's not it's not just where it fell at a certain point in the in the deliberations so so i'm converted to maths but maths with with plenty of room for us to arbitrarily <laughs> decide the maths got it wrong which yes. uh, which we did a bit this year yeah and I, we did it a little bit differently this year because of time constraints i think last year was like closer to like the vision of the math process where we did the math and then and then we did get into a meeting that was you know not the same marathon that those meetings have been in the past of litigating like, hey, I want to bump this up a few spots. I want to bump this down a few spots. I think like we should change these things. And that part got done like as a big group discussion. And that part is fun, like doing the the final particulars. But yeah, like you said, Robin, the math does give a chance for like, if I was in a meeting of the thir- all 30 of us, I'm not going to give my opinion on, I don't know, uh, Death Stranding. Cause I've not played death stranding. So like, I don't even remember if I voted in every category for death stranding. I maybe didn't cause I haven't played it. That was a bad example, but you know, some things that I have like half an opinion on, I'm not going to voice that, but in the voting system, like your opinion does go into, uh, it does go into the tube as it were. Molly, do you have any, any feelings before we move on to advocacy portion? Yeah. Like, you know, Robin's kind of right. And the, the shouting matches definitely did, like they were like a test of endurance basically just who was the gobbiest and had like the least amount of social time outside of work to to sit there for ages but I feel like I feel like the the current method it's still like this year especially was definitely a test of endurance just the different kind of here's a list of 300 games rank as many as you can on four different aspects which You know, we have guidelines on what each category kind of means, but I think it's still largely up to interpretation. And like Lincoln said, it's kind of debating with yourself as well, like where where those lines kind of fall. And this is going to sound really stupid for me to say as someone who's like half of their responsibility is putting numbers on things, but I really hate putting numbers on things. Like, <laughs> like I really hate putting numbers on games. Cause like, you know, I might look at two games and in my brain, they're both nines, but maybe for different reasons, but for someone like, and I guess like, you know, numbers are ultimately for games that, um, subjective. Right. But so having to put like four different numbers on like hundreds of games, kind of wore me out a little bit maybe that's the intention maybe the intention is to 
is to tire me out so that I don't put up a fight. <laughs> but, but I'm I'm slowly warming up to it. I I think, you know, we're still kind of fine tuning the system, I think, and there's been something that I have enjoyed about doing it this way is that there's a lot of there's been like loads of feedback and discussion around how how we do these ratings as well, which I think has been really valuable. Yeah, I think that's like a really important thing is I think we always stand by the top 100 that we put out, mm-hmm. but I think it can always be better. And I think it feels like we've we've been improving our processes every year, kind of year on year. And this feels like a really interesting new direction to take that. I think there's a lot of refining of kind of the categories that we might do next year um, mm-hmm. and 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 the kind of meetings around it and stuff like that. So, yeah. Did, did we talk about the PowerPoint presentation meeting? We didn't, but we totally should. I wasn't there. I was I was on holiday for this for this meeting, and I'm very we, upset about it. We didn't yet. I'm going to save that for later because I do want to okay. get into some actual talking about what is on the top 100 list right. since we've been yammering about a process a little bit so far, <laughs> uh, as we do. Uh, it's as if we might enjoy long meetings. Do you think that might be true about it? <laughs> uh, okay, so top 10 at least. I want to read <gasps> off for you guys of what is in our top 100 this yes. year. Surprising nobody, the top game that we put on the list this year, Baldur's Gate 3. We Rich. kind of thought that might happen, and the math came out correct. Ended. Objectively correct. Ended, Ended the reign of Disco Elysium, which came in mm-hmm. number two, though. Disco Elysium was the number two game on the list. Number three is Elden Ring, and then Minecraft in four, Persona 5 Royale at fifth, <laughs> The Witcher 3 at six, Half-Life 2 at seven, Bellatro at eight, Stardew Valley at nine, and Doom 1993 at 10 the og the og yeah. and uh an interesting uh, that one certainly got by on the importance category i would say uh it, it did well in other places like people like generally rated a high on quality but that's an interesting thing of how we've changed this math process now factors in like the the importance the effect on pc gaming that a game has had not just like what it's like to play right this minute um So yeah, 1993's Doom. Uh, So that's the top 10. You can, of course, find the whole top 100 list on the the website at PCGamer.com. That that has probably been talked about for the last, like, week at this point, I would say, based on Mm -hmm. when you're all going to be hearing this. Uh, What I want to talk about, like, things that got cut from the list and, like, placement changes that we feel personally aggrieved by. This is the the, uh, getting your feelings out portion. Uh, I guess, do we want to talk about cuts? Lincoln, did you have anything that got cut from the list that you that you have feelings about? Yeah, um, going back through last year's list, it hurt to see BattleTech fall off. I'm a big mech guy. I love some giant robots stomping around, and BattleTech is like all you could want from a good mech tactics game. Like it's got good mech customization. There's interesting like little story beats outside of battles where you're managing your uh, mech warrior mercenary lance. Uh, It's just great. The flavor's on point. Um, The movement of the mechs themselves, just like moving them around the battlefield. Phenomenal. It's, it's just for what you would come to a game like that for, it's all there. Um, so it's, I'm sad to see that go because somehow I still feel like the world is underserved for like solid mech tactic games mm-hmm. in a way that I don't really understand because everyone, <laughs> almost everyone loves some robots. Um, we still got into the breach and armored core six on the list. So like there's good robot representation, but sad to see battle tech go. Um, and another one that hit me harder than I thought it would to see it fall off the list was Microsoft Flight Sim. Um, oh, okay, which yeah. some people would argue isn't really much of a game at all, but like I've had some borderline just like spiritual moments in Flight Sim of just like <laughs> the the awe-inspiring scale of the earth and how small we are in it just like settling in when you're like flying up against the Alps. Um, it's weird how affecting that can be. Um, and I've I haven't had that intensity of like an affective experience in a lot of other games. Um, yeah. Sad to see that one drop off, but maybe with the new one coming out, we can uh, shove it back in next year. Yeah. What about uh, Molly, Robin? What, what got cut off the list that you guys were disappointed by? Robin. 
I'm never that. I, I like cutting stuff. I'm never that torn up by stuff getting cut. Up, <laughs> Brutal. Um, I like cutting stuff to make room for cool new stuff. Um, uh, I'm never that precious, I think. But um, I mean, it helps that I think a lot of the things that I, a lot of my favorite things, did make the list. But um, uh, <laughs> I <laughs> I was a little bit sad to see uh, Midnight Suns fall off the list, um, mm. but like, I get it. I, I, it felt like the same feeling as the feeling of realizing that like that game had not done very well and wasn't going to get a sequel. You know, like that kind of like, well, we 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 had a beautiful thing, but it's it's gone. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not too cut up about that. I th- I, I think I think we got a really good list this year. I didn't I didn't feel too aggrieved by anything. I think. Mm-hmm. Molly, what about I, uh, that for you? I was sad to see Final Fantasy XII go. It keeps. I think it keeps coming on and off the list. I think it's genuinely such a fantastic underrated JRPG. Uh, so I was kind of sad to see that go. I was also shocked to see Street Fighter Six last year was like top 10 i think top 10 or top 20 and it just vanished off the list this year to be fair i didn't really fight very hard for it but you know that's 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 probably uh a me issue and also lauren we kind of we kind of fucked up but me and you we kind of are you gonna talk about the mine that i yeah this will get us into the discussion about the PowerPoints meeting that you guys want to have, because now I want to talk about things that you guys successfully, like either tr- did successfully or tried to get on the list because we had um, a, a, like an advocacy meeting, which I think the vision was to have it a little sooner so that you could advocate for a game and get people to actually like play it, to have an experience with it and then go into the voting. We didn't get it together quite quick enough this year. Um but we had this meeting, we put together like cursed PowerPoint slides to be like, this game should be in the top 100. You should vote for it. Um, and I will go first and admit to what I did, which was I made a PowerPoint slide for The Sims 3 because Molly and I have feelings about what The Sims 4 is like to play right now, just like mm-hmm. a lot of other Sims 4 players do. And I was like, go back to The Sims 3. Like we should supplant The Sims 4 on this list with The Sims 3. I gave some great arguments about how it has an open world. Uh, I still like its art style better. Um, I went back to play it. The live mode is more fun. Weird things happen. Uh, It's more stable. Well, not like wholly stable. There aren't a bunch of new updates. So the mods for it, you don't have to constantly reinstall. It's just like a paradise, peaceful of uh, mods that don't have to get updated all the time. And uh, what happened to my astonishment is that then when it came to voting, uh, people voted the Sims four poorly because I had shit talked it and not enough other people played the Sims three that they didn't vote for it. So I got no Sims on the top 100. That's what we got fault. both of I them. Did. Yeah. We, we got, got both no of the Sims. <laughs> real, uh, real split the vote thing going on there. Yeah. Some sort of yeah. allegory. Failed game bit that one. <laughs> I sure did. I really, I really biffed that one guys next year. Maybe it'll be the Sims three. <laughs> maybe I can do it. So, okay. But- Lauren, do you think The Sims 4 deserves to be on the top 100? Well, not right now. Neither of us feel that way, <laughs> right? But The Sims 3 should have been. I, I, next year, I'll make people play The Sims 3. So the not right now answer. point, I think it's just like, it's one of the things that I like so much about PC Gamer's top 100 list is that it's it's a historical document. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's here is what we think the top 100 is right now in this moment. This year, and those yeah. feelings change. Like, I think that's great. Especially yeah, for, for games sure. that are around for a decade. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's what I put together a PowerPoint on. Uh, what did you guys do PowerPoints on for that meeting? A couple of you did. May, or maybe was it just you and me, Lincoln? Uh, I did one. Did you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me what you guys did PowerPoints on and if you succeeded. Well, this was actually where I, I entered the Top 100 process this year, because at this point I was still a freelancer. And I was brought into the picture for this conversation sort of as a <laughs> as kind of like a Chuck him in the if deep you want end. To talk about, yeah, if you want to talk about gambits, this is um, this was a gambit that Wes Fenlon, uh, senior editor, I, I think is his job title, uh, deployed, where he wanted to just get another game on the list. And he was like, I know Lincoln is a sicko for Caves of Cud, <laughs> so I'm going to bring him in so he can just talk oh this game God. up. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. I'll talk about Caves of Cud. So he just he like... He made you his mercenary? He bought you? Yeah, he, he, <laughs> he, he armed me for battle and just like sent me into the ring. Um <laughs> 
And yeah, I, I just made a strong enough argument on the the grounds of just like Caves of Cut is such a beautiful, strange, arresting game that um, it managed to to hit the top 100, which I'm proud of. Happy to see that. And Where did it land? Nice. What spot did it take? I think it did pretty uh, well. Uh, 80. End. Yeah. Not bad. It's on, it's the, on the list. Went from being Lauren on the did. list to being on the list. Yeah, that is more <laughs> successful than I was. Robin, what did you do with PowerPoint on? Uh, well, I really enjoyed Lincoln's presentation. I remember because I, I uh, Caves of Card is always one of those games I've like admired from a distance, kind of thing, and, and never really put the time into to playing. But it, it, I think it, you really sold that game. Um, although I have still not actually played uh, played it properly, so I need to go back to it. It's always there. Um, it's always waiting. I did. Uh, I, I did Alan Wake Two because I felt like that, that one was probably borderline um, in terms of whether it was going to get get in or not. Mm, um, yeah. He got it, in, all right. Yeah, got in in the end. Um, Twenty one. Yeah, so pretty, pretty good result on that one. Um, yeah, that's very good. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to make sure that Alan Wake two got in because I feel like it, it, it represents like a, a real kind of montage of storytelling. Like it feels like if you wanted to show someone all the different ways that a game can tell a story in like in in, in twenty twenty four like that game would be a pretty good start because it's got you know it's got uh it's got traditional cutscenes, but then also it's got fmv and and it's got lots of like different forms of like written stuff in it it's got like local radio stations and weird background chatter you can find and there's like a full experimental finnish horror movie that you can watch um you know there's like so much creative storytelling going on in that game in all these different mediums that are all blended together so i thought that was like a a really nice thing to to be on the list kind of representing a particular very distinctive style um and then uh i wanted to advocate for balatro as well but i wasn't allowed to but i just threw it in at the end of my slide anyway but i think balatro <laughs> balatro felt like it didn't need anyone to fight for it i it think it like advocated it gonna, for itself yeah, yeah. it's going to be safe so i didn't it's feel good. it needed as much of my defense it's got uh, its claws in everyone on the team at some point or another I think. yeah everyone yeah. was a balatro sicko on this that team was a at one full, point, I think. like trending on PC gamer game. I mean, truly, yeah. you guys were posting scores like constantly. The it's the the not poker poker game, right? For anybody that it, yeah, the missed poker Bellatro. roguelike. Yeah, yeah. roguelike poker. poker yeah. yeah. If if, yeah. if anyone listening hasn't played Balatro, it's on phones now. Like you should play Balatro every yeah, second Lauren. of the day. You should Lauren. wither away into a husk in your chair playing Balatro. It's Balatro responsibly. Please. Yes, please, Bellatro responses. Yeah. Bellatro responses. Your family. Charlie misses. Brooker loves Bellatro, so you guys should too. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get to make a PowerPoint. I was really sad. I was I was not present for the meeting. I I believe I was on vacation, so I did not get to do it. But I did get to see the PowerPoints afterwards, and they were deliciously unhinged. I absolutely loved how unhinged yours especially lauren your sims 3 slide thank was you, you. so unhinged uh harvey randall also advocated for hades 2 i think mm -hmm. and harvey's slide was also very cursed very unhinged and i loved it i'd like and... I, uh, we, we, we talked we talked a bit about maybe like doing that in a form we can release the video of next year maybe i think we're like looking at that possibility but yeah it was super fun so it'd be nice to do that if we can um, it, it was and, recorded with the possibility of that happening so we'll see it, it may yet turn up on social media we'll see what happens um right. i uh i got the the pleasure of because chris livingston made a slide about portal 2 um mm. i don't remember which portal it was i think it was for portal 2 uh, and was not there for the meeting. So I got to just do a dramatic reading of Chris's portal slide, which involved saying the word goo several different times <laughs> like in increasing uh, distress and intensity because I didn't know what was happening. So that was a great experience for me personally. Um, cool. What other like placement changes i guess do we want to do celebratory or aggrieved first do you, which which kind of can placement i do changes? aggrieved yes please do give us your okay I, 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 maybe it's not so much aggrieved as it is just genuine shock is the persona 5 got fifth <laughs> that's too as, high for you 
as a certified persona, persona sicko. sicko, Atlas sicko, absolutely adore Persona 5. Think it's a fantastic video game. I have no goddamn clue how it how it got so high. <laughs> It, uh, the quality score. Every just everybody just personally really Everyone likes Persona, was, and they yeah. felt it was important and like super playable, like to this day. But yeah, everybody just like everyone's personal quality rating was like hell yeah. It was very close to Minecraft in terms of yes. its total score, which is shocking. Like I love Persona. I I guess it must just be like there's like a handful of us. I think there's me. I think there's uh. Nathaniel, one of our uh, social media uh, video people. Uh, I think Wes is also a big Persona fan. I think Fraser enjoyed Persona as well. I think there's just just a handful of Persona sickos that accidentally like skyrocketed <laughs> that game super yeah, high. I think, I think Atlas fans have like quietly infiltrated the PC gamer team. It feels like yeah. Oh, Josh Woolens, he's also he's also a, a Persona oh, yeah. sicko. I always forget. I always forget that one. Yeah, I think I think we're all just there, like quietly, quietly lurking on the team. Like, yeah, we love we love Atlas JRPGs, and I, I think if it was still like a vocal discussion, I don't think Persona would have gotten that high. Which because we wouldn't have spent time litigating Persona Five, we wouldn't have spent yeah. time on that discussion with so many other things to talk about. Yeah, we it's just true. would have been like, yeah, the, it's a good JRPG. It probably would have made like I don't know, top twenty five, maybe. It still definitely would have been like pretty high up, I reckon. I do not think it would have been top five, and that's kind of the one of the interesting ways. Yeah, it's kind of one of the interesting ways that the the maths has has kind of caused these games that it turns out a lot of us really like, and has mm-hmm. caused them to kind of rank so highly as a as a result so it's not so much like a grievance that i have just more of a a surprise on my part i guess yeah, yeah. i think, Robin, I think do you have a... this... go, ahead, yeah. go ahead there's always a bit of strangeness with like games that have been on console for a while but have only recently yeah. come to pc yes where i think if you played persona 5 on like playstation or um or even switch like it feels like you know, maybe something that you really enjoyed, but but is like not very fresh in your mind. Um, but it came out on PC like, you know, like two years ago, I think. So it's sort of quite fresh on PC, really. Um, and then, yeah, like, yeah, it's one of those games that's really good in a way that you don't think about very much anymore because, like, you played <laughs> yeah. it like in you know whenever it came out, twenty seventeen. Yeah, the voting <laughs> sheet comes up. You're like, hell yeah, Persona Five is like amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like you've so internalized that you love the game that you don't even need to talk about it anymore, and then it just comes mm-hmm. out in the map. It's like, oh yeah, of course I'm going to rate this high. It's Persona Five. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> Robin, did you have any placement changes that you were you were personally aggrieved by? Oh, I made a note here of of Deep Rock Galactic had quite a big drop from mm. uh, from like middle of the tables to to more towards the bottom. Um, I I can accept it. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, I love Deep Rock Galactic. I think it's like such a wonderful, unique thing. Um, uh, for anyone who, who doesn't know it, I don't think it's like mega well known, even though it has had quite a long period of popularity. Um, it's 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 about being a dwarf uh, mining a uh, an alien planet, um, and you have to like mine for resources. Uh, kind of a co-op shooter type thing but with these procedurally generated levels that you like dig through and every different dwarf on your team has like different tools to deal with the environment um so there's a lot of kind of it's one of the few co-op games that i think has like genuine cooperation in it where you're like actually having to try and figure out something together like how do we get from here to there you know there's a big ravine or something how do we get across it and you have to actually figure that out together i think that's super fun um and but, as true as that is it's also like perfectly playable solo like mm. it's a phenomenal co-op experience but also if you're just like you know i just want to dig in some caves for a while just throw a podcast on like it gives <laughs> you the tools to do that as well it's just a great game yeah so but i i don't think it's very uh, even though it's still trundling along even though it still has a great you know player base and seems to be enjoying lo- like you know more success than ever at the moment i don't think it's very present in the minds of people on pc gamer um Uh, anymore so i think it's just slowly fading into obscurity at the moment but i want to shout it out because it's still great every now and again i pop into it and i'm like oh yeah there's still rules so uh yeah yeah 
I, uh, I don't know if I had any that I was like personally really upset by. I did note a few that just like caught my eye and I was interested in. Uh, Kingdom, or uh, not Kingdom Come Deliverance, uh, Crusader Kings 3 was in was spot number three last year and went down to 25 this year, which is like not oh, a wow. bad placement. It's just really interesting um, that it that it got kicked down so far. And like, you know, things like Hollow Knight, Hades, Mass Effect Legendary Edition, Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, you know, <laughs> Doom 1993 all wound up uh, <laughs> ahead of it in those places instead. Um, and I'm wondering if that, I don't know the answer, but I'm wondering if that came from the votes of people on the team who are still playing uh, Crusader Kings 3 and have opinions about where that game is at right now in the way that mm. you and I have about The Sims, Molly. Um, yeah, honestly, maybe. 100%. Like it's the, the DLC scheme hit mm-hmm. my my votes for that pretty hard because it's just like those packs cost so much and it's just i don't know what i'm actually getting out of these I oh, so it's know exactly what's how we feel buying. about the sims yeah, it is the sims it's, it's <laughs> dead on yeah <laughs> uh so that yeah that, that went down pretty far i noticed that hitman 3 which was in 26 last year went all the way down to spot 50 as we changed oh, it wow. to world of assassination which i you know I, i'm not like tore up about it but like i really liked hitman 3 like that was I, very I, high up a couple years ago yeah um it, it was even higher in years prior like i think 26 it was, like, was top probably five. a steep fall mm-hmm. it's um, like, it was like top five back in like 22 i want to say 2022 yeah, I think this is no coincidence that we're talking about some of the favorite games of of some of PC gamers' most belligerent uncles. Um, <laughs> uh, Good point. I, I, Good I point. remember Phil being like a huge, uh, the, the wonderful Phil Savage being a very big advocate for Hitman, um, and also having a great, powerful endurance in those meetings. Um, and uh, he's tired now. <laughs> and hold on, where's and, Destiny on this list? And the furious. It is spot eighty-five. That is exactly what happened. If if we were still doing a full team argument, Destiny Two would be way higher because Phil and Tim could stick it out for Destiny. <laughs> and the uh, the the, fu- the ever furious Fraser Brown was a big uh, Crusader Kings advocate. Um, yeah, and he's think, one of the uh, he's one of the the gobbier the gobbier. Because uh, <laughs> I remember when when Crusader Kings Three first got on the list. It was like quite touch and go because it didn't seem like that many members of the team actually played it. Like it seemed like it was. Uh, I think it, I think it's always been a struggle to get members of the team to play Crusader Kings. I think we had a similar thing with two, where there's a few yeah. really strong advocates. But I then love a lot the of idea of Crusader Kings. That, yeah, can't. that's the thing. I think there's a lot of people who like the concept but have but still haven't actually played it. Um, but uh, but then for some for me for some reason three just hasn't stuck for me in the way that two did like i just used to you know jump into two every few months for yet another game and three i've like barely touched since you know i put like a bunch of time into it at launch and i've barely touched it since so um for some reason it hasn't had that tail for me and maybe that is to do with the dlc all being a bit muddy and i will say that new adventure dlc great top tier excellent if you're a crusader kings fan try that out Mm. Nice. The other one I noticed was uh, Baldur's Gate 2 was at spot 13 and fell all the way down to 79. And I just think that's an interesting effect of when this voting takes place, which last year, the reason that Baldur's Gate 3 wasn't on the list last year was because it came out after we did our voting. It came out right after we right like after. concluded. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we had a bit of like an honorable mention on the list last year because it just felt so wrong for it to not get mentioned at all, um, only because of when we schedule these things. Um, and, and I feel like maybe last year, Baldur's Gate 2 had this initial benefit from like the new math system where we were like thinking about importance or like, you know, and these feelings of nostalgia come up and these anticipatory feelings that we had right then about Baldur's Gate 3 about to come out um, that made Baldur's Gate 2 so high on the list last year at 13. And then, yeah, this year it's at 79 because we're like, oh, we've got Baldur's Gate 3. And everybody was like, yeah, Baldur's Gate 2 was great. But am I going to vote like super high for it? I don't know. Um, I don't remember how I voted for Baldur's Gate 2 and it, it's been a it's long interesting time though because it breaks one of our kind of cardinal rules that we've had in place for a long time as well right is that generally we Flexible don't rule. 
yeah, it, it, Cardinal is perhaps <laughs> being too too uh, too strict with this how we view it at this point. Yeah, um, is that generally we try and not have two games from the same series, right? Mm-hmm. So if it's between like Resident Evil Five and Resident Evil Six, for example, like which obviously neither of those games are making it in the top one hundred. But if they were, <laughs> okay, Resident Evil they Seven and Resident fight. Evil Eight. Okay, Seven and Eight. That's that's yeah. a better example. Like. Generally, we would we would only pick one, right, to to put on there. I think Yakuza, we only have one Yakuza mm-hmm. game. Unless there's, like, enough of a difference. For example, I think Morrowind and Skyrim are both on the list. And I think that's how Baldur's Gate 2 and Baldur's Gate 3 ended are up, both on the list. They ended up together. Massively yeah. different, like, you know, eras of gaming at this point, right? Yeah, kind of gulf of time and a different developer, I think, uh... I think helped that one out, but gave it but, yeah, permission. But generally, that that rule helps ensure the list is like has a bit more variety, and and then also you can mm-hmm. have arguments over which is which the best one? one in a series, which is which is which is always fun. Yeah, I think Portal did Portal Two get booted off in favor of the first Portal in the end, or was it the other way around? It's like, Portal. This is an the example. First one is in spot twenty four. Uh, so I, I think Portal I think... Two was originally on the list. Did, is that what Chris? I don't remember which no, slide think, Chris made. For I think Portal. Chris was advocating for Portal Two to replace Portal and yeah. fail. Ah, Portal One doesn't have the goo. There we go. there was that's a lot of because goo in of that my slide. reading. Yeah. So. yeah, his argument was mostly goo based, and there is only <laughs> goo in, in two. One doesn't. Those great arguments goo. are, yeah, yeah, a so. very substantive <laughs> goo based argument. Yeah, and I think that was what lost him the. Uh, <laughs> by, by the time you'd finished doing his slide everyone just wanted to stop hearing the word goo so uh. <laughs> it would have been better if he read it it really this this is on my shoulders not chris's uh speaking of serious stuff robin i think you wanted to talk about dragon age and this is quite a moment to be talking about dragon age because we are about to have a new dragon age game um what you you had feelings about making sure origins stayed on the list i think is that what happened yeah i think um so there's there's always a bit of weirdness around Dragon Age in that like I think every game in the Dragon Age series is pretty different and there's always some kind of rumbling of like should Dragon Age Origins be replaced with like Inquisition or like I mean there are last there are year bit- last year I made us vote on at least two of them maybe all three I might have put all three Dragon Age games in there and I might have done it again this year I don't remember Sicko um, well, PC yeah. Gamer has some real like Dragon Age math, Two sickos math. on it as well, which um, which is always da- like deeply dangerous. Um, <laughs> uh, it's the only but... one I've played through. <laughs> ninety four, by the way, is it ninety four? Uh, yes, no, let's 94. not. Let's not. <laughs> let's not bring it up. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, I, I feel really strongly about Dragon Age Origins, and particularly as like a, I think Dragon Age Origins represents the last of a particular kind of RPG from Bioware yes. and kind of. Thanks to Baldur's Gate 3, it's kind of come back, but at the time it was kind of the last of those RPGs to be made in a big budget form. Um, and it seemed like it was like the end of an era. So it's kind of it kind of represents something in the RPG space, I think, as well as being, you know, I think still a really fantastic game. And with like the Veil Guard coming out soon, um, actually presumably not not long after we've we've posted the top one hundred. Um yep, very soon. It's uh, I mean, we'll see. We'll see what that game is like when it comes out. But I think, sort of, on some level, it does represent a kind of existential opposite to Dragon Age Origins, right? Like, it has more of a, a kind of action-focused combat than ever. Like, I think it's the most action-focused a Dragon Age has ever been, mm-hmm. um, and and kind of, um, uh, I guess, a very like modern. Bioware feel something that is is more into the realm of like later Mass Effect stuff like that rather than um, rather than Dragon Age Origins. So so I, I I thought it was a good year to kind of reaffirm how good Dragon Age Origins is and the kind of point in time that it represented, and then like we'll we'll see how we feel about. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of anticipating not liking the Veil God as someone who loves Origins, but we we shall see. We I, I, we come in with an open mind, but uh, yeah, Origins is known to like we all consider that to be a very important RPG for sure. I mean, it's it's a thing that that would not get made today. Um, 
basically. Like the, the origins of origins are the thing that nobody would ever spend the money to do anymore. Like we know <laughs> that those were, those were too budget intensive, like doing all those like uh, specific sections for different origins, like wild. No one would do that now. Um, it, it's just a, a very special thing, magic that had ever happened. Um, and that wound up at spot 94. So it is on the list. It's just, just hanging out there. there. Just, just barely. stayed on. Yep. Uh, what about wins for like particular developers or like any personal vendettas that we have about like games, series, whatever? Is there any, anything you guys want to bring mm. up? Uh, I think uh, people might might remember or not, but uh, before Disco Elysium took the top spot, the thing that was in the top spot for ages was um, Divinity Original Sin 2. Yes. Um, so... I will say shout out to Larry, and I mean they've had plenty of praise for Baldur's Gate three, but like those guys have uh, have basically been consistently contenders for our number one spot with something for quite a quite a while now, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, and I think they they outdid themselves to such a degree with Baldur's Gate three that I think now the fear is. How is anything ever going to knock Baldur's Gate three off the top spot? Because the top one hundred is really boring if it just has the same like top five every year. <laughs> but like seriously, what is ever going to knock Baldur's Gate three off the top spot? We're going to be arguing about that, you know, twenty years time. We're going to be arguing about Baldur's Gate three's placement on the top one hundred list. We do have like runs of golden children for sure. And yeah, and I mean, yeah, I mean, hopefully the something comes out. For Baldur's Gate 3. Something comes out that's even better than Baldur's Gate Three. I'm going to be absolutely psyched, but uh, I think it might yeah. take a little while. It's going to be the original sin two is 41 on the list, so that that was part it's of the still on there. Running. Yeah, it's those are both on the list. Baldur's Gate Three in spot number one. Divinity Original Sin two also a very great RPG at spot 41. So yeah, uh, good on Helldivers two for making it on the list as well, which is a, technically a, a Sony game, right? It's a Sony published game. We were fortunate question mark enough to get it on pc at the same time which is Mm -hmm. kind of a rarity for for like sony published games right normally we don't get them for a little while but we got it the same time as everyone else and it's done very well on pc and a lot of people on the team loved it as well so like very cool that came in at I 14. just lost it. There 14. we go. It came out in 14. Uh, notable absence, though. Starfield did not make the list. Is, uh, that, is that notable? <laughs> oh, no, Robin! that's part of the problem, Robin! isn't it? <laughs> uh, I, think, I think maybe like a year ago, we probably would have expected it to at least have made an appearance on the list. So I think now, kind of post-release, it, I'm, I'm surprised anyway that... Well, I'm not surprised at this point, but I think this time last year I would have been surprised yeah. to have known that it would not be on the list. Now, post-release, we know that it's boring and sucks, so it doesn't need to be on a top 100 list. Yeah, and instead, <laughs> we have both Skyrim and Morrowind on the list. Skyrim is and, at uh, 37, and Morrowind is at spot 57. Uh uh, this is and technically not Bethesda, but, but Fallout New Vegas has a nice oh. spot at 33 as well. That's the Fallout nice. that got the spot was New Vegas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make a better Fallout than New Vegas, Bethesda. I dare you. <laughs> I would like New Vegas to run. I would. It's such a hassle. Well, this I is why we have a playability Vegas. category, which I, which I, know, I, think, which it, it I think it did very poorly. Bad in. <laughs> yes, it, it did really well on like personal quality, New Vegas did, and people's ju- like feelings of importance for it. Not so good on playability. Everybody admitted that that's not a super playable game. It takes a lot of fiddling to make it actually work on PC at this point, uh, even if you've got like a fresh install. Um, but we do love New Vegas. Um, I wanted to note that. So you mentioned Yakuza, Molly. Um, yeah. There's often there, there's a few Yakuza sickos on the team. Me, Phil. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Fraser. I don't remember. Um, and there's always a bit of a, a, a scuffle over which Yakuza is going to be on the list, especially now that we've had like the reboot with Yakuza 7 with like a dragon, which moved from, you know, the action brawler combat to the turn based combat. Very different. A weird reverse from, yes. from the usual pipeline yes. of turn based action. Yakuza kind of did, did the reverse. Yeah. <laughs> Who does that in this day and age? In this economy, <laughs> I don't understand. But, um, and I love Yakuza 7. 
Yakuza Zero is on the list. It is at spot uh, 32, and it was at 31 last year. So it's very consistent. We have very consistent feelings about Yakuza Zero. And I will say that, like, I continue to feel like that's the best place for a person to enter the series. I know it's a little bit older. Um, I know Yakuza 7 is newer. It's shinier. And I, I love that cast. I love that game. But I think what sells that series is the, like, the mythological glitter and glamour of the eighties. Like that is like, that's what like makes it an experience is this like Mm -hmm. thing that I wasn't there for. And Yakuza (laughs) seven is this more, it's a modern take on, it it has all sorts of commentary about like our, our modern society and, and Japanese like politics and organized crime and all that stuff. And it's very interesting and very good, but like, the fantasy is Yakuza Zero, and like the body con dresses with the sequins and the and the cabaret clubs. So I, I also just think like Goro Majima is basically like a scientific constant. Like the numbers aren't going to change on that man's <laughs> appeal. Like <laughs> he's going to be a pirate. He's going to be a pirate next. I'm excited for that. Hell yeah, he is. Uh, oh, and then Stardew Valley rejoins the top ten. I forget As where it, it was should. last year, but it now is. Uh, spot nine and I think it was like 13 thereabouts last year and it popped back up again so well deserved well done Stardew I think that 1.6 update probably did some things for people that that really like jumped its player numbers people, like yeah. lots of people were back into Stardew again so I think it got a big great. bump in like on the um what do we call it a hotness on the hotness scale there was definitely yeah. like a, it felt like there was a lot of hype around that game this year off, off the back of the um the patches and Mm-hmm, it definitely helped sure. reaffirm like how much people still care about Stardew. I mean, basically every time, uh, every time he made a tweet, like Eric, uh, is Eric Barone? Mm-hmm. Every time he made a tweet, you know, people were people wanted to 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 know everything about what he just. You know, every they, single tweet of his is a news story. Like, yeah, we were, <laughs> we were writing a news story like every day about what he was saying about that patch, and people were so excited to find out more and kind of really excited for that that upcoming content. So, which really surprised me. I thought Stardew, you know, I, I think Stardew is great, but I thought its time was maybe petering off. But it feels like if he announced a Stardew expansion tomorrow, people would be. You know, would love oh, people it. would be incredibly That's, excited for that. That's yeah, what one point so, five update was. That was the expansion, basically. Yeah, that was the yeah. expansion. Yeah, maybe Haunted Chocolatier should be a a chocolate making expansion for Stardew Valley at this point. I don't know. Uh, any other like notable things we want to talk about? Um, like stuff that you're surprised still made it on the list, or like other weird placements? I stand by I mean, the list. All I'll say is. <laughs> Any top 100 list that has both Caves of Cut and Dwarf Fortress on it is like a personal victory for me. Anytime yeah. a player is convinced to play anything with like tile based graphics and procedural like story generation, we've done something right, I think. So Dwarf Fortress spot 16. Well done, Dwarf Fortress. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I think one of the things that's great about the PC game of top 100 is that it, it always feels very PC, right? Like it's always got yes. a bunch of weird stuff on it, a bunch of, you know, just stuff from all across the spectrum of of PC gaming, which is is always one of my favorite things about PC gaming, is that you know it, it encompasses so many different kind of experiences, not just um, uh, your kind of blockbuster AAA AAA games. You know, um, uh, one, uh, one that I thought was was interesting this year was um, uh, Hades. Uh, Hades is at number 20 Hades mm-hmm. 2 didn't manage to supplant it um, Harvey mm-hmm. specifically like advocated for that but um, uh, but our consensus seems to be that Hades 2 isn't quite as good as Hades 1 yet um, it is still in early access so it's kind of got, got time and that will probably be kind of reappraised next year but, yeah. um, but I thought that was an interesting one I thought it, I that's kind of where I fall I think is that I don't think it's as good as Hades 1 yet um, mm-hmm. but, um, but I kind of took it as a given that it would be supplanted because you know it's clearly not a bad sequel um but uh but yeah no it's not quite lit a fire under us yet in, in the way the first one did next yeah. year maybe maybe next year well as uh, you said robin i think the list is very pc gamer like be- yeah. like the top 10 says it all like it's not just a list of the biggest games that came out in the last two years that's so not what this list is um it, it's like 
you know, an enduring favorite like Stardew Valley. It's a classic Doom game. It's the indie game Bellatro that we were all obsessed with. And then it's like our favorite RPGs from the last five years, things like Baldur's Gate, Elden Ring. Uh, the Witcher 3 is a little bit older than that at this point. Minecraft is in there. like, And the whole list goes on in the same way, I think, as that top 10. It's a mix of like the latest, greatest releases and things that are like still amazing and still really beloved by their communities. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Good job, guys. We should uh, we should do this again next year. Let's uh, let's do it again. <laughs> Hell yeah! Uh, after we've all slept a little. Uh, well, <laughs> as usual, you can uh, read all of our great news, reviews, guides, opinions, coverage on PC Gamer. Specifically, you can read the top 100 list on PCGamer.com. You can re- read a couple things around it too. I think we're going to have a, a list of the things like the cuts from the prior year, like we talked about earlier in this uh, in this conversation. That's going to be a, a story along with a couple other things. And then uh, also, as usual, you'll be able to talk with Molly and I about this week's episode at forums.pcamer.com. So thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you very much for having us. Thanks so much.